from the Barbados to the newsroom. This is your news update for Thursday, December 9th. The island recorded its 16th road fatality for the year last night. 74-year-old Denzel Allman of 102 Cherry Drive, Oxnard, St. James, perished after he was involved in a collision with a police vehicle along Black Rock Main Road at its junction with Fairfield Road, St. Michael. Police Public Relations Officer Acting Inspector Rodney Innes updated reporters at the scene. When we initially arrived, um, we were treating one male who appeared to be seriously injured. Uh, the ambulance service was summoned and unfortunately they found no sign of life and uh, we had a stage where that person would be pronounced deceased on the spot. Quite unfortunate. Um, the collision involved a police vehicle, a police vehicle that was responding to a particular matter and a motor carrier, the sole occupant being the driver. He, unfortunately, is the deceased person at this stage. In other news this Wednesday, Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Senator Rudy Grant, says the grouping is still awaiting the creation of safe zones for the sector. At Wednesday's fourth quarterly general meeting, Grant says safe zones are critical to building the island's reputation as a safe destination, and they're looking forward to further discuss the matter with the social partnership. We are expecting that there will soon be a meeting uh, of the social partnership. We would have had discussions in relation to safe zones as well with the um, Barbados Private Sector Association. And we know that a request has been made um, for, for having um, a meeting for further discussion. Grant outlined the BHTA's safe zone policy, which was agreed to at a meeting held in November. The safe zones policies should apply to both employees and patrons. Safe zones should be for fully vaccinated persons or unvaccinated persons who have evidence of a negative rapid antigen test taken no later than 24 hours prior to attendance at the tourism enterprise for patrons, while unvaccinated um, employees will be required to test weekly. And the, the, the board also agreed that 25% of the fully vaccinated employees should be required to test every 60 days, and that staycation should be provided for fully vaccinated persons. Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Kurt Humphrey, says all necessary steps will be taken to ensure the safe delivery of personal cargo in time for Christmas. He gave the assurance amid concerns raised by members of the public about having to endure long delays to get their barrels and packages from the Bridgetown port. There's an increased amount of cargo. Um, they're working, we've opened the port for extra hours to be able to get the, the cargo out. We are facilitating, obviously, increased containers. Uh, the other thing is that in Barbados now, we scan all the containers. So we have to scan and make sure Barbadians are safe. So we're doing that as well. But I am confident that the containers that are in the port, the barrels that are in the port, once they came in, in a proper time, we'll be able to have them all out of the port um, before Christmas, for sure. Um, so I'm asking Barbadians, obviously, to bear with me. Um, we're going to have to bring on additional staff to be able to run the, the overtime hours that we are working now, but we are working to facilitate the increased um, production in the port so that Barbadians can have a proper Christmas. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To 
regional happenings, Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown is optimistic the country will record growth this fiscal year, and he's expecting a rebound in economic activity with several projects on the horizon. We should see nominal growth, maybe between 1% and 2%, and uh, it would have shown that um, the decline that we had um, last year wasn't as a result of any bad policies of our administration. It was because of the fact that we had a significant um, reduction in trade because of COVID. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Brown expects accelerated expansion in real gross domestic product in 2022. He says this will be driven by various projects as the government continues to push for further diversification of the economy. We're hoping that we can grow the country's economy by at least 8% and um, based on certain um, projects existing and new ones to commence in 2022, we could possibly get up to 10%. And this is assuming that there's stability uh, in all of um, 2022, because if we end up with new variants that become um, very destructive and there's disruption in the system, then clearly I mean, we would not achieve that level of growth. But the prospects are looking um, pretty strong. And I want to thank the Antigua and Barbudan people you know, for the level of resilience that they would have shown during the last um, almost two years. On the international front, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson apologized and his advisor resigned on Wednesday after a video emerged of senior aides joking about a Christmas party at Dunglin Street last year when social events were banned under COVID-19 rules. We get the details from Euronews. I will regret those remarks for the rest of my life. That is how senior government aide Allegra Stratton referred to the now infamous leaked video in her resignation statement. To all of you who lost loved ones, who endured intolerable loneliness and who struggled with your businesses, I am truly sorry. And this afternoon I am offering my resignation to the Prime Minister. Trisha followed the rule. Prime Minister Boris Johnson continues to deny knowledge of a party despite the leaked video. Mr Johnson faced MPs for the first time since the leaking of the video at Mr. Wednesday Mr. afternoon's Mary Prime Minister's questions. He took the time to insist that no such party took place right. and that I no regulations were broken. He did, however, apologise for the joking seen in the video. Speaker, I apologise. I apologise unreservedly for the offence that it has caused up and down the country and I apologise for the impression that it gives. But I repeat, Mr Speaker, that I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged that there was no party and that, and that no Covid rules were broken and that is what I have been repeatedly assured. The footage in question obtained by ITN was shot on the 22nd of December last year at a time when much of the UK was in lockdown and people were banned from mixing with their families. What's the answer? Last week. Opposition leader Keir Starmer has accused the Prime Minister and the government of repeatedly lying to the public. The Prime Minister, the government, spent the week telling the British public there was no party. All guidance was followed completely. Millions of people now think the Prime Minister was taking them for fools yeah, yeah. and that they were lied to. Yeah, yeah. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.